The Vice President, Yemi Oshibajo, in a recent statement, affirmed that Nigeria is no doubt dealing with a large and expensive government, and this, according to him, calls for a national debate considering the circumstances surrounding it. Other schools of thought, however, regard the Vice President's statement as an excuse, demanding that decisive and deliberate steps be taken by federal government to urgently tackle the problem. If you ask me why they're maintaining it, because it's favoring them. It's like, you know, we have a, a system in Nigeria whereby it's we and them. So whatever is benefiting them, you don't expect them to cut it down. As for instance, the NAS uh, that's supposed to pass a bill, that's supposed to reduce so this um, uh, imbalance in our economic system, is CNN, some of them 13 million, some 15 million. And you've not seen any of them coming out and saying, look, oh, look, we need to do something about that. And then the, uh, the vice president, you know, talking about NAS, you know, as the, the, the same people that they will not uh, do anything about. My, my question to the vice president and the presidency is, have you done anything? Have you passed any motion? Have you passed any bill in that effect? So that when they now reject it, you can now authoritatively say, yes, we did something and it never happened. Because the federal government has not done the needful. On their own parts. Don't forget the biggest arm of government is still the executive. They have over 50 ministries, MDAs, uh, administrative agencies, lots of and lots of it, all reporting to the executive. What have they done to trim them down, to match them, to cut them up they can, to reduce them they can, and then we can now talk. Don't, don't, don't start with the legislators. Do their own last. Do your own first. Emphasizing the importance of expanding loans, if need be, on capital projects, the need to also streamline overheads was advocated. You don't get loan for frivolities. You get loan to plow to invest so that you can accrue benefit from it. Okay, recently you, we heard about the 22.7 uh, 7 billion, and out of that, you're giving. Uh, NTA, 500 million dollars. What is NTA going to generate on that amount? So the federal government and the president should not exonerate themselves on the economic collapse, let me put it that way, of this government. They, they, they are, they've not shown us that, look, they are serious about recovering this economy because all that we've seen, loans and loans, they are not thinking outside the box. What happened to our refineries? in Kaduna, where they expended some billions of Naira, and that refinery is not earning anything. The same thing in worry. So we see it's, it's, a, it's a conglomerate, it's something you have to look at from open and global perspective. Because Constitution says that at a particular time, I think, I think three years or four years, there was a salary increase for public officers. That's the law. So that's the first law you must tackle. Once that law no longer holds, then you cannot come to FMAC and start reducing salaries. But to ask them to do that now, unilaterally, is breaking the law. The need for urgent reduction in the cost of governance is expedient, as no country can or has survived when over 70% of its revenue is spent on overheads and recurrent expenditures. Stella Opara for Galaxy News, Lagos.